Hello, this is an introduction to data mining in Orange using logistic regression to classify voting data and ROC analysis to test how well the learner has performed. So the choice of voting data is especially suited for this since logistic regression's learning algorithm can only provide binary classification. Here the two classes are Republican and Democrat. This tab delimited data file was downloaded from the Orange documentation and input into Orange using the file widget. To get a sense of what is contained in this data, we can use some basic visualizers, such as distributions. Um, this here shows the frequency with which members of either party voted on budgetary issues, such as handicapped infants, water project cost sharing, adoption of the budget resolution, and so on and so forth. And these are what make up our attributes. As you can see, some attributes are definitely more polarizing than others. We can also use RADVIS to get a sense of trends in the data. And the plot here indicates that it is possible to predict the class, Democrat or Republican, based on the attributes. And this is what we're going to use logistic regression for. So first, let's input our data into a data table. As you can see, there are missing or unknown values present in 203 of our attributes. This is almost half of our data. And since logistic regression doesn't know how to deal with missing or unknown values, um, we either lose half our data set or we impute these missing values. To this end, we can either use the impute widget given over here, or we can simply use um, the impute function built into the logistic regression widget. Here are the different options for imputation. We are going to pick average values. And um, the stepwise attribute selection uh, allows the learner to iteratively add and remove attributes one at a time based on their significance. And the thresholds for addition and removal can be shifted here. And you can also limit the number of attributes in the model. Um, it should also be noted that logistic regression will always remove those attributes that remain constant or those that can be expressed as a linear combination of other attributes. As you can see, our original data has been input into the logistic regression widget. And now we have to specify an output. For this, we're going to use the predictions widget, whose input is a classifier. We are also going to input our original data for purposes of comparison. Here you can see the predictions made by logistic regression and the original classes. Most of these have been correctly classified, but there are some misclassifications. To get a sense of how many data instances were misclassified, we can use a scatter plot. First, we're going to select our attributes to only include the predictions made by logistic regression and the original classes. We can then input this into the scatter plot. Which shows how many predictions by logistic regression overlapped with the correct party classifications and how many were misclassified given by these two groupings over here. If we want to glean more specific data from logistic regression, we can use the nomogram, whose input is also classifier data. Here, for each class, you are able to see the probabilities that a member of that class will vote on any one of these budgetary attributes. If we want to assess how well logistic regression performs as a classifier compared to others, such as Naive Bayes and a classification tree, we can use the Test Learners widget. We input the learners into Test Learners along with our original data. We are going to train the learners on 70% of our data and test it on the other 30% and repeat this process 10 times. The five performance scores we are going to measure are classification accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, 
area under the ROC curve, and the Breuer score. As you can see, logistic regression had the highest classification accuracy out of all the methods. We can also use the confusion matrix to see how many misclassified data instances there were per classifier. The naive base had about 139 misclassified data instances, whereas logistic regression only had about 59. The rest of this tutorial will focus on the ROC analysis widget, whose only input can be evaluation results from test learners. The diagonal line over here represents the ROC curve of a random classifier, and the colored ROC curves over here correspond to the classifiers that were input. The further away the ROC curve is from the random line, the greater the area under the curve and therefore the better the classifier. So we can zoom in halfway. As you can see, you have options to show the convex curves for each ROC curve and an overall convex hull, given by the yellow line over there. Since we did multiple iterations of random sampling, we can specify how the ROC curves average over these under the settings tab. The merge option treats the test data as if it were a single iteration. This is the current setting. The vertical setting averages the curves vertically and the bars give the confidence intervals. The threshold setting averages the curves over the threshold position and show horizontal and vertical confidence intervals and the none option simply prints all the curves. So we're going to return to the merge setting. Now the analysis tab can be used to adjust the performance line which tells us how each classifier performed under certain conditions. Specifically, we can modulate the cost of false positives and false negatives. Note that these range from 1 to 1,000, and while the units don't matter, the ratio between the false positive cost and the false negative cost does. For example, we can set the false positive cost to about 200, and the false negative cost to double that at 400. Note the position of the performance line here it indicates that the classification tree had the optimal performance under these conditions. If we now change the costs while keeping the ratio the same, the performance line returns to its previous position, still showing the classification tree method as having optimal performance. We can also manually set the prior target class probability. The compute from data function sets the prior class probability to the proportion of the class in the original data. So this is how ROC analysis can be used to find the optimal classification method given certain costs and certain class probabilities. Have fun!